I guess the word general paper, the word general means this, it can cover everything, right? Everything, the sky. Yeah. anything. Welcome to today's episode of Mind the Gaps. It is a session in which we share with students on their learning gaps and study gaps. In today's session, we will be discussing on various um, concerns and questions which JC students have on general paper. So today we are very happy to have with us Mr. Stephen Sim. Right. Stephen is actually our teacher. He's a vice principal at My Stretcher and he's also the HOD at my stretcher for secondary English as well as JC general paper. And Stephen has also been teaching in schools. He was a HOD of general paper and English literature at the JC. Let's welcome him. Hi, thanks, Christy. Stephen, just ask you a very, very simple question. The word general paper, is it so general that students don't really know how to go about approaching this subject? Well, the thing about general paper is that you don't call it the general paper. I mean, we say the general paper, but when we use it in normal language, we just say GP, GP, GP. Mm. So this GP thing, it covers a wide range of topics. When you're in secondary school and you learn uh, English, uh, they don't focus on content. It's, it's actually about uh, your, your vocab, your grammar, your ability to understand accurately what you read. But when it comes to junior college, the expectations are higher. That's why it's no longer ordinary level, right? Go level, nice. Advanced, Advanced level, level yes. A. And they actually uh, require students to have content. They must know about the world. When it comes to the kind of students and the kind of students which we want to produce, we want to produce world-class citizens who are able to carry out intelligent conversations with their peers who might be uh, from Germany or from France or from Japan. So we are preparing students who are able to evaluate, who are able to think and who are very knowledgeable. They know a lot about a lot of things. So the in terms of the content can range from politics to economics to uh, health uh, to gender and discrimination. Uh, it can do with crime and punishment, so many, 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 many things. And so sometimes students feel that it can be overwhelming because they have to learn so many things. If, if you have to learn about all these things within two years, I'd say it's very tough. That's why we uh, told our students all the way from primary school at Mind Stretcher, we told them, please read widely. Because if you have this firm foundation where you've been reading widely, even when you're in primary four, primary five, you just start reading short articles about many, many things. And then you accumulate over time. So by the time uh, you reach junior college, you have that store, you know, that, that background store of knowledge. And it really helps students when it comes to doing well for the exam. See? So I guess the word general paper, the word general means this, it can cover everything, right? Everything, yeah. anything. Yeah, so it's so general that um, I suppose they have to be very widely read, like you said, right? So that leads us to them uh, trying to acquire general, general knowledge, right? Everything is general. Do you have any suggestion where or the sources in which they can start building that general knowledge? Yes, I'll give you the old-fashioned answer. The old-fashioned answer is read widely. Mm. And then the second old-fashioned... So <laughs> the second <laughs> old-fashioned uh, matter is read the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we can do a plug for uh, the Straits Times. And then don't confine yourself to local papers. You can also read uh, sources from overseas. Uh, CNN, why not? The Washington Times, why not? Uh, the New York Times, why not? Uh, Sydney Morning Herald, why not? So, we, so there are many, many different sources uh, worldwide uh, in terms of the kind of information. And as you read, 
from different newspapers, you you start to realize that each of them uh, has their own bias or each of them has their own slant, mm. and that's one of the interesting things that you get to do because you get to see the the same issue being handled but from different points of view and that's one of the things which you want to understand how uh, different editors different writers can look at the same issue and yet disagree mm -hmm. and actually at the secondary school they had this question you know the talking heads question whereby uh, the guy says something and then the girl says something and it's actually based on the same passage so what happens is that there's actually a stepping stone for what is required at the JC. Because at the JC, uh, for general paper, what you need to do is you need to be able to see things from different perspectives. You know, uh, they don't want to have students who are very narrow-minded, who are full of passionate intensity, but they just refuse to listen to anybody. They want people who open up their perspectives, you know, and who can appreciate. Yes, that's, 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 that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a real, really important thing. Mm -hmm. Now, other than these uh, two old-fashioned methods, reading, eh, well, there are, there are new sources of uh, information nowadays. We have uh, YouTube. So, some parents say, hey, YouTube is bad or YouTube is good. Again, and again, when it comes to GP, you, you no longer deal with the black and white. This is good or this is bad. It's actually about particular channel we subscribe to. And so, there are quite a number of good channels. You can subscribe to things like TED. Not TEDx, but TED. You could subscribe to channels like uh, Veritasium and uh, any other channels. Uh, suit uh, your interest. So, choose something which you're interested in and which is beneficial. Uh, which uh, teaches you about the world. Nurture this sense of curiosity about the, the world around you. I'd say that that's one of the most important things. So you're talking about reading widely from various sources. Um, has the reading got to be more purposeful? For example, um, you know, are there certain uh, themes that you know, the general paper often test on? And as a result of which, when they read, they should focus on categorizing their reading based on these themes. And also, is, is it a good suggestion for them to pen down and collate all these different views according to these themes? This has to do with how we approach the world. If you experience the world, then you realize that everything in the world is connected. But it's very difficult to study everything at once. One approach is to slice it according to uh, topics, but you, you need to understand that this, this particular concept of topics, these are also arbitrary, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, where does economics end and where do politics begin? You know? so, <laughs> so these are arbitrary uh, silos or arbitrary containers of topics. Well, if we analyze it according to these topics, uh, we, we get to see the, the most common topics which appear for the exam. exam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, be, it, so it will be things like uh, science and technology, so very common. Uh, also in terms of economics, but not economics per se, but in terms of choices and kind of opportunity cost. So if you want to do this, what does it cost us? You know? mm -hmm. So nothing is free in this world. So it's not just a simple matter of saying, why doesn't the government do this? Why doesn't the government do that? So we need to build up this uh, ability to weigh for ourselves and to say, okay, if we do this, what is it that we need to give up? So, so this kind of thinking is very interesting. This kind of uh, real world adult thinking. And that's one of the things which students need to learn very quickly within these uh, two years. They need to make that jump from secondary school whereby they just accept whatever the teacher gives them as being uh, gospel truth and being absolute to questioning assumptions. So at JC level, we actually learn to question assumptions. So what are the basic principles? Uh, how does society actually function? In order to understand how the society functions, you need to know about uh, medicine, you need to know about aging, you need to know about uh, gender roles, you need to know about a uh, whole lot of things. So, so many, many interesting topics 
to make it manageable, we, we have selected the most common topics. We put them into modules, mm. uh, pretty many manageable bite-sized uh, sections. So if you, if you are interested in this particular thing and you want to explore more, or if you think, I don't know enough about this particular topic, for example, gender and discrimination. So, okay, so I, I know that there's lots of uh, talk on the internet about this and gender rules and uh, sometimes we have protests somewhere and things like that. But uh, what is it actually? How can I get the full picture? Because one of the things which students uh, might not know is that secondary schools, they are actively, um, I wouldn't say discouraged, but I say that there are certain things which uh, at secondary school you are not encouraged to think too much about. You just say, you just focus on the basics and then uh, you do well in your exams and get your O levels. But beyond that, beyond that, that's when we start to uh, question how our society functions because the expectation is that this group of students who go to JC and then who, who emerge and you know, they, they become leaders in our society. The expectation is that this future generation of students, uh, they will be the ones who will uh, be in charge of our society. They make crucial decisions which affect how we live. Uh, and so we need to equip them with the ability to think clearly, to evaluate, mm. to make good choices so that everybody in society benefits. For these students, they are encouraged to question assumptions, but what we really want to teach them, how to have a fruitful discussion, not a polarizing discussion whereby you just yell at each other. Mm. You know, and, and that's one of the things that you see on the internet. Whether it's Facebook or whether it's Reddit or some other forums, you find that people take very polarizing opinions and they just shout and they just yell and they say, I'm correct. And then when the other person uh, responds, again, you have another person being very passionate and uh, telling them about the other point of view, but nobody actually bothers to listen. So one of the problems uh, with this uh, kind of polarizing approach is that after all, people get very frustrated. <laughs> so. So my advice is don't argue with strangers on the internet, it doesn't work. <laughs> what they need to do when it comes to general paper is to engage in an academic discussion. Mm. And the approach is not debate. And I think that's a good exercise for two reasons. Number one, uh, it encourages students to do uh, research on their own to collect the points. And number two, it gives them the opportunity to uh, speak in public to uh, voice their views, express their opinions, be spontaneous. In the, but there is a problem with uh, debates, which is that, again, there's this idea that there's a winner and there's a loser. Mm. And sometimes the, the way that debates are won is by, uh, by appealing to the audience. So that's, that's not the approach. What we really want to do when it comes to writing GP essays is that we need to take the approach of being humble of being a scientist. So, so when the question asks, to what extent is X, Y, Z true? We don't say, it's very true. <laughs> it's the truest, it's the bestest of the best. So we, we don't do that. We, we don't want to do that. We actually want to go saying something like, uh, I think there are some things uh, which have this particular expression, but in some other conditions, it can be like that. And so, what so happens? More weighing the yes, views. yes, evaluation yeah. and weighing and uh, considering different mm -hmm. options. So that at the end of the discussion, uh, you, you don't need to feel as if uh, you need to say, "I am totally sure." That that's actually what the GP examiners do not want. They don't want closed minds. They actually want this process whereby, whereby the students have gone through careful. Uh, evaluation of all the different aspects and then at the end of it they say um, uh, well we, we are always open to considering other points of view uh, that, that's the, the important uh, thing to, the, to adopt the attitude of being a humble scientist who acknowledges the weaknesses which are inherent in their own positions mm. and yet being very precise being very concise and, and relying on rational uh, discussion and on logic rather than uh, argumentative fallacies. So the general paper sounds like not, not a very easy subject. <laughs> it's uh, tough. 
Yeah, so assuming I'm a student and I have uh, read a lot, I've accumulated a lot of uh, can, you know, I know when you know you give me a question on this particular topic, I know exactly what are the pros, what are the cons, you know. Are there any techniques that the uh, students um, can be taught on how to even start writing the general paper question, uh, answers? Because I think many students, when they are faced with essay writing, they really do not know how to start. What is the intro that they should be putting in? What's the body? What's the conclusion? Uh, are there some kind of templates that um, you know we can, or your module would teach students how to start framing their their answers? To to answer that, I I need to provide the background. The, and the background is that you know at secondary school, mm. uh, students are taught a variety of different types of. Essays to write. Some of them are descriptive, some of them are personal recounts, some of them are expository, some of them are uh, argumentative. But when it comes to the A levels for the general paper, there's only argumentative. Mm. So that, that particular technique of arguing is different. And even that name itself, arguing, can lead students astray. You know, what was previously talking about where they, where they uh, take it as something which is very emotional and they argue in order to win. But that's, that's not what we're aiming for. So there are certain ways of uh, explaining, of exploring ideas, of showing to the readers uh, why you hold a particular point of view, of proving uh, that uh, based on the kind of evidence that we have now that this is the best option of comparing that uh, between two options uh, which is better what are the trade-offs and then under what conditions uh, this might change so actually these these three things which i've talked about so far uh, showing and providing evidence uh, comparing these are just some of the techniques uh, which we have uh, put down explicitly in our modules. You see, what, one of the things uh, which students do, some of the good students, what they do is that they uh, buy up all these notes you know, from other colleges. Because every every college uh, provides their students with sets of notes and they provide students with model essays. Mm -hmm. The problem is this, that if you are a good student, then if you're very hardworking, what you do is you get hold of this note and then you read through essay after essay after essay and then somewhere in your brain, it clicks and say, ah, Based on all this, I'm able to distill the, the methods or the, the good ways of uh, arguing or the good ways of explaining, the good ways of writing. What if, number one, you don't have enough time to read so many? What if, after reading the, all these model essays, you aren't able to distill? You get more confused. You get more confused. What if... Uh, you don't have access, how do you know whether this model compo or model essay is actually a good essay or whether it isn't? Because some of these model essays, uh, you know, maybe they are, they're something like 2,000 words. But uh, under exam conditions, you can't write 2,000 words. And then some of these essays, they, they are written with lots of facts and figures. But under exam conditions, you don't have access to all these facts and figures. It's not possible. So, so when I, I survey all these uh, existing uh, model essays, I realized that I, I don't actually, I haven't actually come across uh, any kind of material which teaches students explicitly write it like this mm -hmm. and not like that. And, and that's what I, I really wanted to do when, I, when we worked on uh, this uh, GP uh, essay writing modules. We actually wanted to help students, you know, give them a shortcut. Yeah. So, so why make them sift through all these modules and then uh, they they somehow magically, automatically, or using their subconscious mind uh, arrive at this? Why not I do this for them, and then I write out explicitly? So these are the techniques. These are the techniques. So that when the students uh, come across uh, a question they can match their knowledge of the techniques which we have taught them with uh, the content and then they can produce something uh, 
uh, which is good, which is that's wonderful. Yeah, that, that's the way. Can you say yeah? That's the <laughs> instead of them having to go through that whole discovery journey on their own, right? Yeah. To come to that that enlightenment state <laughs> where they really know how to write an essay properly. Hey, students, you'll be very happy to hear that <laughs> a lot of things have been done already. There are two papers for the GP exam, right? The essay as well as the comprehension. So what are the key skills? I think you have touched a lot on general papers. So what are the key skills needed for the comprehension component? The, the skills which uh, we need for concrete are the same skills uh, which you have learned all the way from primary school. Mm. But at a more advanced level. So, uh, you find that at the, for the G GP concrete paper, they, they hardly have any questions where you can just live. Compare this to your primary six, you know, 80% of the paper is just lifting, right? Search for the correct information, copy it, put it down, make sure that it answers the question, okay, you get a mark. At the JC level, most of the questions, the short answer questions, are actually inferential. And so, oh, inferential, so, okay, how to infer? But it's actually not about inferring. You have to see what is not there. Mm. And then you need to write about what's not there, what has not actually been stated. Reading between the lines, seeing the, the structures, because there are all these words on the page. And this is surface level. But underneath that, there's a kind of structure or organization which uh, students need to be able to perceive. And in order to do well for this, they, actually, they should actually map it out. You know, take very detailed notes, use a mind map, map it out, see how the argument works, what's the flow of the essay. Because a uh, comprehension text is actually an essay. It's two sides of the same coin then they can uh, explain using their own words. They need to be confident enough to rely on their own ability to, to write proper English sentences. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things, this ability to infer, to see the hidden structure behind it. There is a question which is a summary question and that's also tested in, in during the O-levels, right? How different it is uh, between that and the uh, A-level general paper summary question the techniques are the same but the text is much more difficult <laughs> when it comes to your a level or gp text uh, that kind of text is if, if you if you take a look at any of the text you realize that they are they're actually giving you uh, the kind of passages which uh, adults read and it's not just any adult, these are topical issue papers, you know. Uh, and it's not it's not easy for students to process it. That's why this this ability to operate very quickly, upon reading it at first time, they actually need to, to map it out. And so that by the time they map it out, they actually have a summary. So so one of the skills which students need to have is to be able to create their own text as they read. So, but this text doesn't have to be in a written form. It just needs to be a kind of map, a mental map of, of the ideas which are there. So that's that hidden thing. And, and this is something which they need to synthesize and create for themselves. In terms of the summary skills, the assumption is that, well, uh, you've done well for your O-levels and that's how you managed to get to JC. And so, you should already possess the necessary skills when it comes to uh, summary writing. It's just that the text is now at a uh, at, at far longer yeah. and uh, tougher. If you were in a mainstream school, you're, if you're doing the express uh, stream in uh, secondary school, uh, the, the then you would have uh, had four years of training when it comes to doing summary writing. If you were in an IP school or if you're in IP, Maybe you didn't have as much practice in summary writing compared to the students in uh, uh, the, who were doing the O level, and then again the students need to scramble and catch up. If we say that these students are already uh, more capable, then they can do that in a very short time. So I guess summary question is not so not something that's so new because they are quite familiar with it, right? They have 
uh, been writing summary questions or answers when they were in secondary school O levels, uh, adopting the same techniques and you know applying it to A level questions. Although the passage is longer, more difficult, but I think at, at least in terms of the skill sets and everything, is they're still on familiar ground. I think the scary part is the AQ application question. I think it is something that is totally new, and uh, many question, many of the students, I think they are very very fearful when they hear this. Yeah. So is this something where they can uh, just apply the facts? or information provided in the passage to answer this question or do they have to still um, take some information from you know externally from whatever they read outside to supplement this what is required in answering a good aq okay so this thing called the application question the aq for short it's actually part of the comprehension exercise so you have to answer questions summary and then now, uh, they've added on one extra component called the AQ, application mm -hmm. question. Some students uh, try to deal with this question by providing another summary, which is wrong. That's actually the wrong approach because it's not about uh, summary writing. Because they've already done a summary, so why would there be a second summary question? You know, our students, if we train them, they can do well in it. So they've been trained in summary writing, so they do summary writing. Unfortunately, they are trying to do summary writing for the AQ because that's the new thing. Of course, there are a few naturally talented or gifted students who are really exceptional. Even if you don't teach them how to do it, they can, un they can answer wonderfully. But for almost everybody else, you know, what they need to learn is how to evaluate. And evaluation is not easy. Because evaluation is something which wasn't required for the O levels. And, and I don't believe that it is something that uh, either you're born with or not. Again, it's something which can be taught, can be learned, it can yeah. be learned. So, how to evaluate something? And, and, and uh, so, again, we can teach students uh, explicitly and say that okay, this is how you evaluate. You evaluate in terms of time. Time, so, so does it a short term effect? long-term effect? Is it temporary? Is it permanent? So, oh, once you understand it, so, oh, I can evaluate in terms of time. And then now you can use this criteria to evaluate a whole lot of things. Medicine, technology, political initiatives, uh, discrimination. We can use this just by using this simple concept of having a criteria. And so, what we've done is that we have actually created our own uh, set of criteria for mind structure uh, and, and a couple of our webinars will teach you and share with you. So this is just one of them, time as a criteria. So talking about the your webinars or the modules that you're going to pull, would you be able to say a little bit more so that, you know, as I think JC students, they are students with very, very little time, right? They have CCAs to cope with, they have lots of uh, subjects to uh, ensure that you know they are on top of everything um, are there any you know more targeted ways in which they can you know prepare for the GP paper as it leads up to the A levels so what we do is uh, we we have uh, short two hour seminars whereby we, we let anybody come and uh, just listen and learn and we share freely because actually our, our idea is to uh, benefit everybody, you know. And, and, but after that, uh, we might have some students who say, uh, okay, uh, that's very interesting, but I don't know how to apply it, or I need more practice, and I want to explore this idea in detail. And then I'll invite them to come and join us for our short module sessions, whereby we explore these ideas, you know, this, like this concept of evaluation using time. And so we apply that to different topics. And then we have work examples. So how do we, uh, what does it actually look like when you write it out in a sentence? Because one of the problems which I you know that many students have is also, I might know the concept, but I don't know how to actually phrase it yeah. in a proper yeah. sentence. Yeah, that, that is uh, something that most of the students have. Right? They have all the points, but they may not know how to structure it properly. 
Would you suggest uh, students to spot topics or spot themes? You know, so for example, they they say, "Oh, I don't have a lot of time. Can I just maybe just spot on two or three topics, and then uh, hope that they will come out for the uh, exam." <laughs> we're talking about two different things. Maybe the first one is uh, how to do well for the exam. Mm. Okay. The second one is. What kind of a person do you want to be? <laughs> so, you know, if you want to <laughs> work for a multinational corporation next time, and some of you will, you'll be working with Samsung, you'll be working with uh, Dell, you'll be working with all kinds of uh, firms, right? Because Singapore is a hub mm -hmm. for this knowledge-based economy. You can't be a frog in a well. You know? so, yeah, I, I, I did well in a few topics in the exams and then I got uh, my top grade and here I am, I've joined your company and then <laughs> what I, how, to what extent can you contribute to the discussion when it comes to uh, creating value for your customers in future or, you know, or helping other people in the organization. The other thing is, uh, but as, it, as you've said, Christy, is that students don't have enough time so you need to strike a balance and again this is one of the principles which we teach in our courses uh, to adhere to the goldilocks principle so what's the goldilocks principle uh, not too much and not too little <laughs> but just, just enough, nice just yes. enough so that's very important so so one of the things which the, the examiners have given feedback on in terms of the kind of uh, essays which students write they say that uh, the best answers invariably are those that manage to make links from across disciplines. So perhaps the, the question states is, is something specifically about discrimination in the workplace. But if you are to write an essay, you don't just want to talk about discrimination in the workplace. You want to make links with economics, what's the cost? You want to make links with uh, society and culture. So why is it that certain people from certain cultures might not be able to integrate fully in the workplace? What are their values? What are their expectations? So, so they want to see this. You see, so what happens is that the world is unified. When we study, we, we, we do it according to silos or topic. But when we write, again, we need to unify it. And in order to do this, to make this kind of links across topic, you need to have enough you need to know enough so that you can make the links because making the links across topics across disciplines that's actually where we add value that's how we synthesize and that's how we create new ideas to actually push uh, society forward so so i say that uh, don't just focus on one or two topics mm, okay. <laughs> yeah so your answers basically requires you to adopt a uh, multidisciplinary views right Right, so that it becomes a lot more, um, it will seem a lot more evaluated from many, many different angles, right? Yeah. And that I suppose will stand out from other people's essay that is very, like you say, silo, yeah. right? Based on one silo team. Maybe just one last question. What is a, what's the difference okay, between a JC student who is average in terms of you know, this subject GP and one who scores very well and he said, is there, what kind of differences do you see here? There, there are a number of students who manage to get into the JC. Uh, and they might have done very well in maths and science. Mm. And, uh, but maybe for their English, they got a B3. So what happens when they get to the JC uh, and they start to do GP, they, they struggle. I've experienced with teaching these students, they, they really struggle because they might have gotten their B3 because they memorized some model compose and they, maybe they didn't do well for inferential questions but they managed to do well for the other questions. So so with that level of uh, reading ability and with that level of writing ability, when you get to uh, a JC level, you find that uh, it, it's tough because <laughs> the expectation at the, at the A levels is that they have already mastered these things and they are ready for the next step, all these higher order thinking skills. But some of them, they don't have that yet. Uh, so they need help, they need polishing. 
uh, they need to plug in the gaps. The other kind of student which I've come across is uh, they, they're very eager, they know a lot about the world and uh, they have lots of ideas, but they, <laughs> they don't know how to express themselves in a, in a logical way. They're very passionate, but you know, the kinds of arguments they were exposed to, maybe that's what they get exposed to when they go on the internet, you know, they have, uh, yeah. and, and so they learn lots of uh, fallacious arguments, you know, uh, you don't know about the past few years, this American president who, <laughs> so, you know who you're talking about. <laughs> so, so how to argue logically, rationally, in a way which is uh, acceptable in civilized discourse. Now, that's what the students need to learn. Students who master this, who can express themselves well, who are humble and who are open to new ideas. And when they read, they read accurately. They don't read and misunderstand because if you read something and then you misunderstand it and then you get all worked up over it, that's such a waste of effort and waste of time. So, so read accurately, understand it, and then respond. Because respond not because out of fear that you are you are threatened, your values are threatened, but respond by saying maybe you have a point over. Respond by saying, but what about some other situation? What if I change one of the underlying conditions, would your argument still apply? And that's, that's where it comes to the AQ, back to the AQ whereby you take these ideas which the writers have uh, expressed and then you apply it to your own society and then you need to evaluate it. Uh, is it relevant? In what way is it relevant? I, I don't just want to accept it wholesale. I want to consider uh, my, my own particular uh, circumstances, my society's assumptions, my society's values, how can I make the most use of this information to, to benefit my organization, to benefit uh, my society. So, you know, if you are a good student and uh, you learn these techniques, then you find that, you know, it pushes you up. You can operate smoothly, excellently, uh, and then uh, you're a world-class citizen. That's what we hope to produce. And what if you are struggling a lot? It's okay. We still learn. Uh, we still learn to read accurately. Uh, we learn to express ourselves uh, properly, and uh, we can also be uh, wonderful citizens. And we can also contribute. You know, but what we don't want to do is we don't want to have students who are so skewed and negative. After the JC, that's it. You know, they are at university and. The thing is that when you once you go to a university, you don't actually have a teacher who looks after you. Mm. Primary school you have a form teacher, secondary school you have a form teacher, JC you have a civics tutor. Mm. But once you're at the university, you're by yourself. You know, you 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 go to a lecture, you go to a tutorial group, and you're an adult. And the, the expectation is that you must know how to make your own choices. You must know how to to evaluate and think for yourself. And that's one of the one of the main aims of the GP program. I think to sum up, would you be able to think of three words in which you can describe a student who will ace the general paper exam? Wow. What, what are the attributes of this <laughs> kind of person? <laughs> okay, attributes. Mm. We would say perceptive, okay. open minded. Expressive. Okay, that's three. Yes, I want to add. <laughs> okay, I think that's a wonderful sharing from Stephen. Okay, we hope that you have enjoyed today's session and benefited from it. If you feel that you have any other questions or concerns that we have not addressed, please feel free to you know, drop a message in the comments below. And um, be it JC questions, secondary or primary, or be it any other subjects, please feel free to just comment below so that we can see how we can answer you uh, in further episodes. Right? So if you have liked our program, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you again next episode.